filmed him 10 days before, literally in his, in his deathbed, and 10 days later he, he passed, he died. Uh, and when he died, you know, it was national news in the sense that there were obituaries, but um, people didn't really engage with his legacy because it's a complicated legacy. King thought, wow. Our direct action department, under the direction of Reverend James Bevel, then decided to attack the very heart of the political structure of the state of Alabama and the Southland through a campaign for the right to vote. He was a very controversial person, um, and he had this incredible impact on American history, on Western civilization. Um, but because he became, uh, I guess, more radical, though I'm not sure he would describe it in those terms, or more mercurial, or temperamental, or erratic in later years, he hasn't really been honored in the way that um, other people that had his kind of impact were. He was one of 17 children born to a sharecropper father and a mother who frequently beat the children. The Washington Post, December 2008. Bevel's last sermon, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to paint him as either a great guy or a bad guy. I really wanted to show the, the complications of his story. Um, and I wanted to do it in a very unadorned, simple way. I'm captivated by the tactics used by the American Civil Rights Movement in those years. Uh, their use of nonviolence is, I think, one of the most important and misunderstood and overlooked and useful things that people have ever done. Over the objections of King and other advisors, Bevel rallied youngsters in Birmingham to the front lines of civil rights demonstrations. He argued that children old enough to accept Christ were old enough to live their faith. The Washington Post, December 2008. You really have to pay attention to what the man is saying uh, to see the depth of it. And I, I think what I did very well was show uh, both sides of him. The sides of him that is one of the great, in my opinion, one of the great leaders in 20th century America. Bevel was married four times. He fathered 16 children with seven women. In April of 2008, Mr. Bevel was convicted of having sexual intercourse with one of his daughters in the 1990s when the girl was a teenager. The New York Times, December 2008. Um, I think particularly in American cinema, we're kind of stuck in a, a fairy tale approach to what cinema should be. And we want our stories to have a clear beginning, middle, and end, and have a clear moral journey. Yeah, blue girls around about, you know, they, they just give you sex. So if you were around about playing under the house in the barn, the girls was going to make sure you had sex. So that, that wasn't a thing. It's like they was going to do that. They was going to. So in the South, those girls were like more aggressive in terms of, because they didn't have a monetary value tied to their sex. See, so they weren't selling sex, they just give you sex. But I do think that what happened to him as a young man, a young boy rather, what happened to him as a young boy, as a four-year-old boy, becoming sexualized at that age, had repercussions throughout his life. Having sex with my daughters is no, no more interest in my se having sex with my son. Mr. Bevel had been released from prison in November 2008 because he had pancreatic cancer. Ten days after this interview, Reverend Bevel died in his bed.